Hey guys, welcome back to Network Chuck. So, I've got a confession to make. I haven't been studying as diligently as I should have been. Say what? It's been due to a lot of reasons, but I'm sure you guys have been in the same boat. I've been going through kind of a study slump. So, how do I get out of that? And before we start, uh, let's take our sponsor, INE. If you don't know what INE is, they are an amazing training program for CCNA, CCMP, CCIE candidates. If you are in need of some fantastic training, hit them up. They're incredible. They offer online video training, practice exams, and um, they offer these like all access passes, which will give you access to their entire streaming library, which is amazing. And I mentioned in my video last time that you should be learning Python if you want to kind of be up on the industry trends and, and make yourself what I call a unicorn and what many people call a unicorn. Um, so INE also offers Python training as well. And they offer it specifically on, for network engineers. So they teach you Python and they give you network engineering tasks to perform with Python. So I'm going through one of those courses right now. It's pretty cool. So check them out, guys. There'll be a link below and I'll throw a link up here. INE, they're awesome. Guys, I think we've all been there before. You uh, get into a really good stra uh, training mode and, and you're really hitting the books and then suddenly life happens right you get really busy or you get bored or, or something happens and you stop studying and you tell yourself it'll be a few days that you're just you're not studying and then you skip more and then you skip a week and then before you know it you skipped a month and you're like where did my training go where's my study schedule that's kind of what happened to me and i've got to be honest it's been tough for me um, as you know, I've been trying to complete my CCMP um, routing and switching. I've only got one test left. It's been really hard for me to get back into it because it's been a while since I've taken my route test and I've got T-shoot left, so I have to kind of go through with the, all, all the other topics. But I've been going through a crazy slump where I just, so many things have been happening in my life to where I just couldn't will myself to study. Everything else was a priority before studying and I just couldn't do it. But you know what, enough of that. So here we are, three ways to get out of a study slump. Basically, you can, you can call it burnout, you can call it whatever you want, but it's a time where you just, for whatever reason, have stopped studying when you should be studying. So these are three tips I'm currently using right now. I kinda had to sit down and think about, you know, what was going on in my life and why am I doing this? So step one, analyze why you're in a slump right now. Uh, what's going on in your life? Um, I, I kind of sat down and thought, you know, what could be a reason um, for, for anyone to go through a study slump? And I, I came up with three reasons. Reason one, and this one is for me, my life became too busy. I, I've been changing jobs. I moved. Uh, and we'll go into that more because I mentioned I would be traveling. Kind of had to put that on hold, so I'll get into that here in a bit. So hang tight. And I've had to prioritize things here and there. So a lot of things have been changing in my life. So. I've been trying to study, but it's just been hard to prioritize that in my schedule when everything else is just screaming for my attention. So this is, this is me preaching to myself. I've been doing so many things that studying has kind of fallen to the back burner on all my priorities. So what's my solution for this? You know what? Life gets crazy sometimes and you have to take a break. Uh, take a break and set a time limit. And that's important because why, why is this good? Well, why is a slump bad is the question we should be asking. Well, a slump is bad because it's unintentional, it's unended, it has no time constraints on it, so it could last forever if you let it. And it also leaves you with a guilty feeling because you're constantly letting yourself down. And that really wears on you because when you're going through your CCNA or CCMP and you're doing self-study or going through a classroom or whatever method you're taking, it takes a lot of willpower. It takes a lot out of you. You, you wanna play that game very carefully. You wanna make sure you're not putting too much pressure on yourself and wearing yourself down. So when you're going through a slump and you're, you're like, okay, I need to study today, and then you're like, ah, I don't have time, that guilt builds up and it just hurts your motivation. So when you get to a point where life is just overwhelming, you're moving or you're about to have a new baby, or you're changing jobs and it's requiring a lot of uh, brain power at work to transition. You know what, my best recommendation, take a break. I recommend just depending on your circumstance, two to three weeks, maybe a month, set that time and say, you know, I'm taking this time to focus on other things and then I'll move on to my study. 
That way is sort of guilt-free. It won't be unended. There's a specific time frame you're working with. And that's something I wish I would have done. I, I got a little ambitious. So with us moving and I recently changed jobs and a few other things going on, I tried to keep my study schedule active. Of course, when it came time to study and other things were jumping right in the way and those things needed my attention, they needed my time, I couldn't study. So I started feeling guilty every single day I didn't devote to studying. So I wish I would have just kind of sat down and gone, okay, fine. I'm about to go through a lot of change, a lot of transition. My time is gonna be taken up. Let me take a break, a guilt-free sabbatical from my studies. I'll pick it right back up afterwards. So yeah, don't feel guilty if you have to take a sabbatical for, for big life changes, guys. Another reason for a study slump, why you might be in one, is that maybe you're just bored. Maybe spanning tree protocol doesn't interest you like it used to, or maybe it never did. How can it not though? Spanning tree protocol is fun, come on. So what I would do from there is maybe try to figure out what you're bored with. Because if you're studying the CCNA, maybe you, I, would, I would assume you have just a little bit of interest in networking. So when you get to a slump where the reason is you're bored, maybe it's just one section you're bored with. Maybe for, for me, when I was studying uh, for my route test, when it came to IPv6, for some reason that bored me to tears uh, when I first got into it. Now, I think it's pretty cool now, and but when I first hit it, it was the dry spell in my study. It was a long chapter. It was super boring. A lot of concept. Oh. And because of it, I started to avoid studying. So I'd get home and I'd open up my book and I'd be like, okay, where am I now? And I'm like, oh yeah, uh, IPv6. And then I, you know, my interest was already pretty low. And then my wife is watching The Office or something. And I'm like, hey, that, that's a funny episode. So I'll close my book, go to the couch. I'll be right back. And uh, I'm not right back. So my advice with this is if you really hit a topic that just, it drains your drains you and, and you're just really going through a, a boredom spell with that, you know what? Skip it for now. Move on to something more exciting. So I jumped into, I think it was like DMVPN or something or, you know, OSPF. And I came back to IB, IPv6 later when I my motivation was a bit higher and it, it wasn't so dry when I hit it that time. Now, the other danger is that your boredom may not just be with one topic. It might just be the CCNA in general. So my advice for you is you may, you may not like networking or maybe you don't like the routing and switching portion. So explore. If, if you're like really hitting a wall on boredom, go explore another topic. Maybe look at security. Maybe look at voice. Voice is awesome. Maybe look at wireless. Maybe delve into programming a bit. Just find something that sparks your interest. Um, maybe just going to something else and then coming back to CCNA routing and switching might be okay and, and it'll just help you kind of transition, but you don't want to keep yourself in a boredom slump. If you're bored, you're not studying, jump into something that excites you and go from there. And then the third reason that you might be in a study slump is that you've lost your motivation, which happens. Uh, and we'll get into that here in a second. So that was step one. Uh, analyze why you're in the situation. Why are you in a study slump? And and what, what can you do to kind of remedy that? Um, step two, to get out of a study slump, revisit the reasons you're doing this and then maybe even come up with new ones. Every one of us has a reason we started doing the CCNA. We started studying for the CCMP or the MCA or the MCSA. We all have this core reason. Maybe it's I mean, I think the, the, the core reason for everyone is just to have a better life. And whether that's through making more money or, or having more time or just getting a better job with, with, that gives you more freedom, we all have these core motivations. So what I've done is I kind of sat down and just revisited why am I doing this? What, what is my end goal? What is my end game? And for me, it's just to, to be more successful in my career, to open up more opportunities, to have more freedom. So sitting down and maybe even writing it down, journaling it a bit, just going over it again, that seriously helps. Some of you have families and you're doing it for your family. You wanna make a better life for your kids and maybe you want a new house, you wanna live in a, a better area. We all have these things we're working towards and the CCNA or CCMP are going to help us get there. And then uh, step number three, find resources to motivate you and keep you on track. Kinda of sounds like step two, I know, but this one's a bit different. What I mean is you need kind of uh, external external sources to keep you on track, to just, to, to emulate. So for me, what keeps me motivated a lot of the time is getting on YouTube and finding other people who are 
studying for the certifications or people who have found amazing success when studying or finding great people to follow on Twitter and they're tweeting about their, their success and what they're doing every day. And I'm like, oh, well, hey, they're studying. Uh, I should be studying and it really helps me to get into it. And hoping like this channel, um, I'm hoping it will encourage you to start studying. So if you're watching this right now, as soon as this video is done, watch two or three more videos, <laughs> right? Or, or as soon as this video is done, go study. Go knock out a few Pomodoro sessions. Um, if you don't know what that is, hit up my video on the seven CCNA, CCMP study tips and I'll show you everything. Um, I'll show you some amazing tips on how to start studying. Um, another way to kind of get motivated is to find a new study resource. Um, if you watch like CBT Nuggets and a guy like Jeremy Chara, I mean, his, his enthusiasm, his passion for networking is contagious. And watching him, and he got me into voice and collaboration, so watching him really does make you want to keep watching more and make you want to study more. Uh, and then maybe getting a new book or going to another YouTube channel that teaches you or, or getting a course off Udemy that's a new fresh perspective. That, that might help guys. Or maybe another motivation is you get into a study group and you have other you have peers who are keeping you accountable. Uh, maybe we'll start one on Facebook. Let me know if uh, that would be something you're interested in. Start a Facebook study group uh, to keep us all accountable. Another one might be uh, talk to your boss. Maybe your job will have some kind of reward for you getting your certification. Maybe a promotion, uh, maybe a raise. Uh, a lot of Cisco resellers and, and MSPs have incentives for getting your certification. So maybe you set a goal with your boss and that's a, a progress marker for you and it's gonna make you look good at work. So that might be another thing to keep you uh, keep you motivated so people at work know what you're doing and they're checking in on you. And another really fantastic way to keep yourself motivated is to find a, find a coach, find a, a, a guy who can mentor you, who's been there, done that, been through the certification paths, knows how hard it can be to study with you when you have all these other things going on in your life. Um, yeah, find a guy who can, who can help you out. Now, I, I did mention that I'm not traveling just yet. Uh, we had to take a step back um, due to different um, situations in my life right now. We do plan to still do this, so stay tuned. But we had to kind of take a step back. I went back to my previous employer. Things are good, I'm happy, I'm in good place. But I'm not traveling just yet, but we, again, we're going to do it. So keep watching for that. My ultimate goal is freedom. As I know a lot of your goals are uh, freedom as well. I mean, because you can make money, especially in IT. Uh, if money is your goal, you can make a ton of it. Uh, but for me, time is my, uh, my commodity I want to earn here. Now here we are guys, certification wins. All you guys have been watching the channel, have been working towards your certifications, and you passed the test. You're certified. So thank you to everyone who told me about your certification wins in the comments. You're keeping me motivated. You're keeping everyone else motivated, so thank you. I'm gonna list off the ones I, I saw. If I missed it, yours, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead and comment on this video if you if I missed yours or if you passed your exam. Go ahead and comment and let me know and I'll mention you in the next video. So here we go. I apologize if I mispronounce your name and if it's a username and it's kind of weird, I also apologize for that, but it's kind of your fault anyway. Nazarias Canlas, sorry for mispronouncing that, passed his CCNA routing and switching. Congrats. Lenart Philip Mansgard passed his CCNA routing and switching. Congrats, man. That's awesome. We got Benaya Karlstrom past the c -Cent. Amazing. Congrats. We got Duct Tape Pilot. Uh, I've seen your comments for a long time. Past the c -Cent. That's awesome, man. Keep going. Ben L. CCNA routing and switching. Congrats. Shirag Shah past his A plus and CCNA routing and switching. Beast mode. Awesome. Congrats, man. David Villalba past the c -Cent. That's awesome, man. Good job. The Mr. Absolute, full name. CCNA routing and switching. Pass that test. Awesome job, man. Cor Critical, I think. Passed his CCNA routing switching back in January. Congrats. What's your progress now, man? Keep going. Omega Batakahuria. Passed their CCNA. Congrats. Steve Shake. Passed his Linux Plus. That's awesome. Congrats. Dennis Wilder. Another Linux Plus. That's awesome, man. Congrats. Linux is hot, so it's a good path to go down. Julio C. Passed his CCMP switch. On his way to CCMP route. Congrats, man. Keep that momentum. Don't let too much time go between those tests. Ami Mbazaki passes MCP and MCSA. That's awesome, man. That's amazing. Aaron passes CSENT. Congrats, Aaron. That's awesome. Jose Ario passes CCNA routing and switching. Congrats, Jose. Sean Elliott passes CSENT. Congrats, man. Oswaldo Alvarez passes CSENT. Good job. That's awesome, man. So guys, everyone I listed here, you did it. You got your exam. You, you, you passed your certification. Don't stop there. Keep going. Let's get certified together. 
Keep that momentum. And if you're watching this and you haven't passed your exam yet, let this be just a motivation for you. It can be done. People are doing it. These people have families. These people have jobs. These people have all these things going on, but they can still do it, and that means you can too. So what's been going on with the IT in the world? Um, here's the broadcast address. Um, I found this in the news. It's kind of cool. Cisco is partnering with a company called O2 to provide a free wireless access for the city of London, the entire city. It will be provided with their Aeronet 1560 series, and uh, it's gonna be incredible. I mean, free, free Wi-Fi in a city. That's where we are right now. And basically, it's, it's built to handle like high bandwidth services, like video calling. I mean, this is so cool. I love that. Um, Cisco also released their new generation of UCS servers. It's their fifth generation, it's supposed to be like, I don't know, twice as powerful as the previous generation. Their whole, uh, their whole marketing tagline is it's not a server, it's a system. Cool stuff if you're into data center stuff or you mess with UCS, I got a UCS at my house. It's fun stuff. They actually said it delivers up to 86% higher performance over the previous generation. That's some serious gains. Man. And uh, more, more news on the security front for Cisco. They announced they're going to acquire Observable Networks, a private company based out of St. Louis. Um, they're gonna use them to partner with their StealthWatch program to take it to the cloud and basically offer more monitoring, threat analytics and things for cloud-based systems. So if you're into that, check it out. Well guys, um, that's about it. Thank you for tuning in to Network Chuck. Um, if you really need some help with training or, or you need some resources, um, hit up my website, networkchuck.com. I'll list a ton of things there. Um, feel free to comment below with any questions at all you have and I'll try to answer every comment that comes in. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe. If you need some training resources, books, videos, what have you, networkchuck.com forward slash resources. Great stuff there. And uh, that's about it. So uh, guys, thanks for watching. Let's get certified together and I'll catch you later.